Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Maddie Cheever and I am a type 1 diabetic with a passion for people. My goal is to help diabetics go from lost and lonely to educated and empowered. Today we're going to go through a step-by-step -step tutorial of exactly how I put on my Dexcom G6 continuous glucose monitor and I'll also be giving you some helpful tips and tricks along the way. I've been using my Dexcom since 2015, so it's pretty safe to say that I have figured out the system that works best for me and I'm hoping that it will help you too. If you are looking for the inside scoop on diabetes and want a supportive community, consider subscribing to my channel and also checking out my blog at cheeverwellness.com, which I will link below. Our first step is to prepare and let me tell you, I have definitely prepared for this. I have waited approximately two months for my transmitter to expire so that I could finally show you the entire Dexcom replacement process. So our first step is to wash our hands and this is a very important step because you don't want to introduce any bacteria or germs into your sterile equipment. I recommend using soap and water and scrubbing for at least 20 seconds. The next step is to collect all of the supplies that you will need. For me, this includes my applicator, which has a sensor inside, my transmitter, since I waited to make this video, alcohol swabs, and skin tack adhesive wipes. I also need my iPhone, and then also my insulin pump, because that also connects to my Dexcom. Our third and final step of preparation is to decide where we actually wanna put our Dexcom. It could be your arm, your leg, maybe your stomach or your back. Uh, think about what works best for you and your lifestyle and also make sure that you have a conversation about this with your doctor or healthcare provider. For me, what works best is putting it on my arm, which I always have, and so I'm actually going to switch it to the other side for this video because I switch every time that I use it. The stomach is one of the most common and recommended locations. It's also very easy to apply since it's right in front of you. Be careful not to put your Dexcom too close to anything like your insulin pump any bony areas or any wounds that you may have because this could disturb the function of the Dexcom. The next main step of putting on a Dexcom is first taking off your old Dexcom. If this is your very first time putting on a Dexcom, then don't worry about this part for now. We'll get to the application soon. So if your session has not technically expired yet, but you're ready to change your CGM, then you're gonna wanna stop that process. And I'm gonna show you both on my insulin pump and also on my phone. First, I'm gonna show you my insulin pump. It is a Tandem T-Slim X2. So what I'm first gonna do is open the screen and I'm gonna unlock the insulin pump. Then I'm gonna to go to options, my CGM, and stop the sensor and I'm hitting yes. In the Dexcom app, hit the settings button, then scroll down to the stop sensor button. Once you hit this, it will confirm that you want to stop your sensor and after that, the session should be complete. Now that I've stopped both sessions on my insulin pump and my phone, I'm going to remove my Dexcom. So like I said, I keep my Dexcom on my arm because that's the best place that works for me personally. To take it off, I simply pull it off like this, or I'll put my arm on my leg and take it off that way. That's the way I'm gonna show you because it's the most camera friendly. <laughs> so first I'm gonna put my knee up and then I'm gonna put my arm on my knee. And as you can see, it kind of gives me the ability to roll the Dexcom so that I can see it a bit easier. I'm pretty flexible, so this doesn't hurt me. If this hurts you, please don't do this. So yeah, so like I said, I'm just gonna take it. I'm gonna peel up the side a little bit like that, and then I'm just gonna rip it off. And I found that this doesn't hurt too much, but uh, it's based on your personal skin type. So be cautious the first few times that you do it. So now I've got my Dexcom off and my arm is all nice and clear with a nice little suntan there because I went out the other day. <laughs> so I'm actually gonna show you the back of the sensor before I take it apart uh, so that you can see what it'll be like next time. So this is the sticky part. This all stays on your arm. And then there's a little tube here, which you can kind of see me moving around. Um, and that is what will stay in your arm and that's what reads the interstitial fluid. 
Okay, so now we have to detach the actual transmitter from the sensor holder, which is this kind of purpley gray looking thing. And so to do that, there is a little area here that's kind of separated and it's very easy to bend. So you simply bend the sensor and then you're able to take the transmitter and release it like that. And this is what the inside of the sensor looks like. So our next step is to cleanse the areas that we just touched. So what I like to do is I like to clean the transmitter, which I'll show you, and also the area of my arm, which I just took the Dexcom off of, and where I'm going to put a new sensor on. So I'm first gonna show you how I would clean my old transmitter for replacing it onto a new sensor. However, since I'm using a new transmitter this time, I'm also gonna show you that process. So. I like to use the Curad alcohol swabs, and I've used these for pretty much the whole time I've been diabetic. 2012 is when I was diagnosed, so I really like them. So I'm gonna open my alcohol swab here, take it out, and then I'm going to wipe off the sensor portion of the transmitter, which is here. And a little extra, just cause. And then I would let this sit on its back like that, so that the sensor's up to dry. And like I said, I'm gonna have a new one, so I'm not actually gonna use this one anymore, but just so you know, that's how I would do it. Then what I would also do is I would clean the area of my arm, which it was taken off. As you can see, there's a little bump here, so I'm just gonna clean that because that's a little bit of dried blood actually. So I just wanna make sure that's all nice and good to go. Like that. Okay, so now I've got my new transmitter and this is the box. There's some personal information on top, so I won't show you that, but I'm going to open it. Right like this. Okay. And now I'm just gonna pull it apart. I have a big sticker here. And boom, there is my new transmitter, all pretty. So now I'm gonna take it out of the box and alcohol swab that. And I've actually got a new alcohol swab here. Okay, so I'm first going to show you how I change my transmitter on my insulin pump and then I'm also going to do it on my phone. So what I do for my insulin pump is I turn it on and I unlock it, go to options, my CGM, which is the exact same thing we did before, and then I hit settings and there is my old transmitter ID in the first line. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to enter my new one, which is located on the back of my box here, um, just right on this back side. So I'm going to read that and enter it. Okay, so now I've entered the whole number and it shows this, which says enter the ID again. And this is basically just to double check yourself. So I'm going to check it again. Okay, so I hit save and it took me back to this screen and now I've got start sensor again. But before I do that, I'm gonna do it on my phone too. In the settings, there's a transmitter button halfway through the CGM list. Select pair new and this will show you the steps that you need. Okay, so now it's time to actually apply the Dexcom. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open my new applicator. And I personally take the paper all the way off and I save it because I've had a lot of uh, issues with weird replacement stories and so I had to make sure that I kept it so that Dexcom had that information. So I'm gonna be on this arm now and I've got my alcohol swab here and I'm just gonna alcohol swab where I want it to go. Okay, so now I've got my SkinTac adhesive wipe here and I've used these ever since I had Dexcom. I really like them and I think that they help keep my Dexcom stuck for as much as I need it to be. So now I'm going to open that and I'm gonna place it just around where my Dexcom will go. Uh, I don't wanna make this too big or too small because I don't want it to not stick and I also don't want other things to stick on it like fuzz or hair, that's a good one. Um, so yeah, I made a Dexcom sized spot right there and um, I'm pretty confident in this because I've done it for so long, but if you haven't, make sure that you take your applicator and you simply measure the area while the backing is still on it so that you don't mess up. Okay, so now I'm going to take the adhesive protection off. So I'm gonna pull this one here and pull the other one and I'm gonna save this because I still need to put my code into my insulin pump. Um, and then I'm going to place it directly on the spot where I put my adhesive. 
Okay, so now it's nice and stuck. It looks like this. And as you can see, there is a protective little tab here and that's basically so that you don't accidentally push it before you need to. But now that it's on and it's good to go, I'm gonna take that tab off so that I can actually press the Dexcom in. So it's pretty simple. I can do it with one hand, but uh, like I said, I'm practiced, so you might wanna try putting it on your stomach first so that you have both hands to work with. And then I'm simply going to push the orange button and that's going to inject a needle and the needle will come back out and a tube will be left. And it's very small, it's the one I showed you earlier. Right like that, and it comes right off. And now the applicator is empty and the sensor is on my arm. So as promised, I'm gonna show you a close up of the sensor and I'm also gonna show you how I put the transmitter in. So here is my sensor and this is the area that will match up with those two dots that are on my transmitter, just like that. So when I first put a Dexcom on, don't make the same mistake, I'm telling you now, um, you have to click in the small side first. This is how mine is oriented. There's a little tab here that will stick inside and then push this top circular part down. Do not do it the other way. It will not go in, it will get stuck. You will have to start over. I've been there. Just trust me on this one. So you want to put it in like that and then it'll kind of be placed down. Uh, so as you can see, it's loose, but it's ready to go. So again, it's just the little tab goes into the small area and then you put it down in there and it'll click like that. And now it is in there and it's not gonna move. You can mess with it and it won't do too much. It actually doesn't really hurt me. Just to make sure that it's super duper on there, Dexcom recommends that you go around it three times. I find that it, uh, since it's on my arm here, it works best if I just push down um, on all sides. Okay, so now I need to put this into my insulin pump as well as my phone. So I'll show you my insulin pump first. I'm gonna turn it on and as usual, I'm gonna do the one, two, three to open it. Super complex password, please don't steal it. Um, and then I'm gonna hit start sensor, which is the very, very top. And I'm gonna hit start sensor and it'll say skip or code. If you say code, which you should, cause you have one, it is this little guy right here. Um, and so I'll put this in and It'll ask me to do it twice. But if you skip the code, let's say you lose it for some reason, uh, then you'll have to wait and then you will have to manually calibrate it. So you'll have to do a finger prick. It's not too difficult, but you know, it's just an extra step that you could avoid. Make sure you have this number. And now I'm gonna do it on my phone. Press the start sensor button and then enter the code that we saved. You can do it manually or take a photo. Either way is fine. Once you've done that, hit save and then confirm the entry. This optional video helps you to insert your sensor or attach your transmitter, but we've already done that in this video. So that is pretty much it. Our Dexcom is on and it'll take about two hours to calibrate. And then once that is done, you'll have your blood sugar readings back wanted to go over a few tips with you so that you maintain your Dexcom as well as you can. So my first tip is to make sure that you're disposing of everything properly. This includes using a sharp container or a DIY at home container, which you can find on my blog, cheaperwellness.com. Again, it'll be linked down below. And these are good ways to ensure that no one else gets harmed from potentially dangerous body fluids or anything like that. So make sure that you take care of others by taking care of your waste. I would show you my sharps container. It looks something like this, but I'm actually in the middle of moving right now. And so everything is just mixed up. I don't know where it is. So I've got a pile going of all of my waste and I'll make sure to dispose of that properly. So my first tip is about bathing. This may look just a little bit different now that you wear a Dexcom, but it's not too bad. So something you'll wanna make sure of is not to go over the area with a something like a washcloth or a loofah. Um, this can peel up some of the patch area and it'll shorten the life of your Dexcom and then you'll have to you know, add a, add a Band-Aid or something like that over top. So yeah, just make sure that minimize the contact that happens here. Uh, and along with that, make sure you're not picking at it. It can be tempting now, you're not used to your Dexcom, you know, and you're like, oh, what is this on my arm? Make sure not to pick at it. It will extend the life of your Dexcom if you don't, um, and it'll help in the long run. You also wanna be mindful of products that you put on outside of the shower. Something like a lotion or maybe a sunscreen could actually kind of cause the sensor patch to lift earlier than it really should. So just make sure that you're being very cautious when you go around that area. 
That being said, some people need more help keeping their Dexcom on. So if you find that you need something like a Dexcom patch, which is basically like a band-aid and it's got a hole for your transmitter and it goes around the patch area, so it just is kind of like a bigger patch. Uh, if you find that you need something like this or band-aids, maybe more adhesive, that is totally okay and normal. It just depends on, you know, your shower frequency, if you uh, live in a super humid environment, if you exercise a lot, which causes sweat, anything like that, you might need some more help and that's normal. So this tip is about ensuring that the Dexcom will work the entire time. So something that can happen is if you have, let's say you put your Dexcom on your arm like me, and that's the best place for you. If you recline on something like a chair or if you're laying down on your side, uh, sometimes the Dexcom can be pressurized and this can actually disrupt the interstitial fluid that's flowing to the tube and that can kind of cause some blood sugar reading issues and so you just want to make sure to try to keep the pressure off especially if you're you know if you wear it on your stomach and you're a stomach sleeper please let me know in the comments how that goes for you I don't sleep on my stomach personally um, so I've never had that issue but let me know how that goes those are some of the things to keep in mind if you do know that you're a stomach sleeper and that could cause issues maybe you should try putting it somewhere else or you know just little things like that that make a difference so my last tip for you today is about travel you want to make sure to be cautious when you're packing your equipment so like I said earlier I'm currently moving and I have a hard shell suitcase that is dedicated to my medical supplies as tempting as it is, do not remove your medical equipment before you need it. I know it saves a lot of space, but it is actually really important to make sure that all of your equipment remains sterile because that is the best way to protect yourself from an infection and your equipment from potentially being broken in transit. Running out of equipment for any reason while you're on the go is a nightmare, whether you're on vacation or you're moving, whatever it may be, protect yourself at all costs. Make sure that your equipment is safe and sound. And also, make sure to pack a little more than you think you need. You never know what might go wrong, so make sure that you're prepared ahead of time. Okay, y'all, that's it. That is everything I have for you today. I hope that this was very educational for you and that you feel confident and empowered to put on your Dexcom. This video is based on my personal experience as well as tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. That being said, please make sure that you talk to your doctor or your healthcare provider. What I do may not be exactly what works for you. If you liked this video, are looking for a community, or want to know more about diabetes, please hit the subscribe button. Also, follow me on my blog at achieverwellness.com. Feel free to comment below with any tips or tricks that you may have that I didn't mention today. I would love to hear about it, and I appreciate the expertise in advance. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to catching up with you real soon. I'll see you next time.